You may have noticed these little plates on the side of locomotives, but have you ever wondered what all the numbers actually mean? Welcome to DadRail. Well hello everybody and welcome to another DadRail video. This video is going to be more of a Jago Hazard style with just voiceover rather than my ugly mug filling your screen. Partly because I've not yet got my studio set up properly and partly because it's good to change now and again. So I'm guessing if you have ever looked closely at a locomotive you will have noticed these data panels. If not then have a look next time you'll normally find them near the cab doors. On the face of it I guess they seem quite self-explanatory and to some extent they are. But as always, scratch beneath the surface and there's more to be learned. Starting from the top on this example, we have the locomotive class, in this case a 66, followed by an A indicating this is the A end of the locomotive. Sometimes, as seen here in this class 73 picture, you will also have the class designation, this one being a class 73-2. Coming down the panel, and we have the self-explanatory locomotive weight, followed by the brake force. Brake force is an important one. Each wagon and locomotive will have its own brake force rating in tonnes and there is a minimum brake force requirement depending on the weight of the train. If you've got wagons in your train that have brakes isolated or are unfitted, that is they have no brakes, then you can fall short of the brake force requirement with the possibility that you can't stop the thing. This is sometimes rectified by adding extra vehicles to make up the brake force, which is why you may see unit drags that seem to be in the middle of a freight train the unit is normally unbraked and the wagons are there purely to make up the brake force. Moving on we have our ETH rating, that's electrical train heating, sometimes called head end power. This is the amount of current that the locomotive can provide to coaching stock to run things such as lighting and heating, i.e. hotel services. You can see here that the class 66 can provide nothing whereas this class 73 has an index of 66. A single ETH index is the equivalent of 5 kilowatts of power, so our little class 73 can provide a maximum of 330 kilowatts of power. Each carriage has a power requirement, and the total power requirement along the length of the train must not exceed the maximum ETH rating of the locomotive. Some coaching stock are fitted with auxiliary generators, so an ETH supply is not required. Working down the panel and we find our RA or Route Availability Index. Each route in the UK is given a Route Availability Index. This is calculated based on the maximum axle weight and axle spacing that structures and the permanent way on that route can support. RA1 is the most restrictive route and 10 the least. Our locomotive here is RA6, meaning it can work over routes with a Route Availability Number of 6 or greater. If the locomotive is part of a train, then the route availability index of the train will be that of the highest vehicle in the formation. It is possible for trains to run over routes that have a lower route availability than the train by the use of RT3973 forms that detail additional speed limits on the route, but that's another video entirely. And finally, we have the maximum speed of the locomotive. As with the route availability, the maximum speed of any train will be set by the slowest vehicle in the formation and may be further limited by rule book requirements, again a topic for another day. So there we have it, a short little video about a little plaque with a lot of important information. If you found this video even slightly useful, it would be great if you could hit that like button and also consider subscribing for more railway content. And if you really like this video, you can support me on Patreon, just like these amazing people have done. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next video.